5g squared let's see so we have 2.5 squared is going to give us a value of 6.25 mm -hmm. 6.25 the next one is 7 and um, minus 5.5 so 7 minus 5.5 gives us 1.5 1.5 squared is going to give us 2.25 and then we have 5 minus 0.5, so uh, minus 0.5, sorry, 5 minus 0.5, 5 minus 5.5 gives us 0.5, and 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. And finally, we have 2 minus 5.5 is going to give us, uh, that's going to give us 3.5, minus 3.5, and 3.5 squared is going to give us a value of 12.25. So that's 12.25. Um, looking at the tour group, we're going to calculate how far each, we're going to do each observation minus its mean squared. So for each one of them, 2 minus 4 gives us 2, 2 squared gives us 4, 3 minus 4 gives us 1, well, minus 1, minus 1 squared gives us 1, 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 squared is 0, 7 minus 4 is, is 3, 3 squared is going to give us a 9. And we need a summation. We need a sum of all of these things here. So we need a sum of all of these values in here, we need to get their summation. So let's just actually just sum up the individual columns. So a 0, 1, 9, and 4 is going to give us 14. 4, 1, 9, that's going to give us 14 as well. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, put down the 0, carry the 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, put down the 0, decimal point, carry the 1. 1 and 2 is 3. 4, 5, that gives us 11, put down the 1, carry the 1, which gives us 2, which is 21 just 21 21 okay. so now we can actually calculate the sum of squares within measure so the sum of squares within measure is simply the sum of these values here okay uh, so the sum of these values is straightforward enough but what we got we have 14 and 14 gives us 28 plus the 1 gives us 29 plus the 20 uh, is going to give us uh, 40 49 so that's our sum of squares that's our sum of squares within measure which now we can actually calculate our sum of squares total because it's just the sum of both of those measures. So now we have our sum of squares total is simply equal to the sum of these two things here, which is going to be a value of well, 49 plus, plus 4. 49 plus 4 is going to give us 53. So it's 53.68. So 53.68 is our sum of squares, is our sum of squares total. So now we're in business. Now we can actually calculate the eta value, the correlation between this multi nominal variable and this variable measured on an interval stroke ratio scale of measure. And as we said, is the a, sorry, the a to correlation coefficient, not a to squared, okay? So actually a to squared would be a goodness of fit measure, if that makes sense. It would be the amount of variance uh, if I'm in an over perspective, yeah? So in this case here, we have a to is simply equal to the sum of squares between groups divided by the sum of squares total, and it's the square root of that. So that's going to give us the sum of squares between groups we just calculated uh, to be 4.68. It needs to be divided by the sum of squares total, which is 53.68, and it's the square root of that, and that's the eta value. So when we do this on our calculator, let's just grab this here. So now we have 4.68 divided by 53.68, gives us a value of 0 0.087. So we have eta is the square root of 0 0.087. Let's just actually calculate that now. So the square root of 0 0.087 gives us, well, that gives us 0 0.295, 0 0.29, okay? And that's the correlation coefficient, uh, which is, from a cone perspective in relation to the, looking at the magnitude of these particular correlations, uh, don't forget cone sort of says, if you want to interpret these things, uh, well, um, above 0. Point, let's say less than 0, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.5, so uh, above 0. 0.2 is a moderate, above 0. 0.5 is typically a strong correlation. And below, strong, I spelled wrong, whoops, okay. And then below that is actually a weak to, it's a weak to no correlation, which is below, below 0 0.2. So you can actually see that we're just above 0 0.2. So there's a very, there's, look, there's a really, a really slight moderate correlation between those, between those particular observations uh, that we've just, that we've just calculated. 
Okay, guys, so you can actually see, hopefully what you can actually see from this is that this eta correlation effectively is quite similar to an ANOVA calculation in relation to the sums of squares that are actually used in the calculation. But the way the eta is calculated, it's actually the ratio of the sum of squares between groups to the sum of squares to the total sum of squares. And it's the square root of that particular ratio is defined to be this eta correlation coefficient. And if you're really interested in this stuff, I would highly recommend that you have a look at uh, Weary and his text, which is correlation, which is contributions, contributions, contributions to correlation analysis, to correlation, correlation analysis. Okay, so it's a very, very good text, and he defines, uh, he derives as well. Uh, these particular formulas, which uh, are very, very straightforward. There's a lot of there's a lot of symbols and so on in the formulas, but they're very straightforward uh, with, uh, to, 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 to derive and really presents a very, very clear explanation of where these things actually come from. Okay, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert uh, with Maths and Stats. Uh, and I hope that this video was in some way intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.